I've been talking for years about people who do spiritual bypassing or spiritual sidestepping and taking spirituality and getting into a place of delusion. Now, somebody did ask what my opinion was on all of this. That's why the video. Hi, welcome. All right, so I'm going to get into this because I have a lot to say. <laughs> and first and foremost... I I was hopeful when I started to see more people engaging in spiritual practice, whatever that is for you, if it's going to, you know, an organized religious, you know, sacred place, or if it is more of a new agey thing, or it's just like that umbrella term of spirituality, whatever it is for you, tapping into and activating that part of you, I always think is a beautiful sign. But something very unsettling started to happen. One, anytime something starts to go mainstream, you have people taking an ego approach to it, but you also have people who are scammers. You have people who are charlatans who want to come out and take advantage of people who are incredibly vulnerable. Now, when we take the spiritual community, it does get a lot of people coming in who are struggling with mental health issues. Why might that be? Well, Leave your theory in the comments, but my theory is that we all want to be loved and understood. We want to feel like we're being heard. We want to feel like we belong. We want to be supported. And the idea of spirituality is that everyone belongs. The problem with this, I've called it magical thinking as well, but the problem with this is that sometimes people come in and it's, instead of addressing the real mental issue, the psychological self, they try to use spirituality as a replacement for that because they think that this so oh, this is energy work and this trumps the the process of a therapist and i i understand again if you're dealing with something psychologically you need to get that type of help that appropriate type of help okay because what i have seen and if you don't know who i am i have been doing this for professionally over 10 years and I was doing this for many years prior to me actually doing it professionally. So I have had lots of people come to me and tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. I have heard some of the craziest things. I have told you guys, if you watch my other videos, those people out there that you think are like they would never, that, that person, sometimes they're celebrities or whatever, but that person would never get a spiritual reading. They're my clients. And I'm not the only one. So a lot of these readers out there, I guarantee you, like they have clients that would shock you, right? I've had CEOs cry, okay? Um, you know, these big tough people that you think, <laughs> like they've got it all together. They have this other side to them, okay? And so when they come into a spiritual, you know, in this case, it was a reading. They come into a spiritual reading at least with me, you're in a safe space to be vulnerable. You're in a safe space to cry. You're in a safe space to let it out as part of your process, right? So your spiritual process. So when people come and approach this, there are some that use this as a way to hide to some people like CEOs sometimes. I, I attracted in a lot of CEOs and not so much recently, but about 2014, 2015, it was like one celebrity after another. It was a little weird. No, I'm not name dropping because my heart goes out to these people. My heart breaks for these people. Like I didn't know all the stuff that they go through and we're acting like they live charmed lives. No, they don't. They're still human at the end of the day. And in, in some ways, some of them, go through a lot more. But, you know, having these people, it's not what it seems, right? And then I would have these other people come in and they might actually be in a place of psychosis. Now, I am not a trained mental health care practitioner. I say that all the time. So these were, you know, cases that were beyond my level of expertise. And sometimes I wouldn't even do a reading for someone because it'd be absolutely unethical for me to take their money. Because a spiritual reading is not what they need. They need a therapist at this point, okay? Or they need maybe a hospital, even. So we have that going on. And then we have other people who, maybe they have a personality disorder. 
Now, again, not coming from a place of trying to be an expert. I'm not, but I have lived it. Okay, so then I'm like, listen, I'm your case study, okay? (laughs) I'm the one telling you what you need to study about this. So that I'm pretty well versed on. I maybe don't always have the right terms or whatever, but, you know, I, I, I know a little bit about that. So you have this whole, you know, group of people coming in. They're in various stages of discovery, healing, Again, wanting to feel loved and protected and, and all of that. Uh, but then there are people who take this to the next level. And I want to talk about COVID. Kind of started before this. COVID definitely was a time when people were at home, I guess, bored. A lot of people were out of work. So they thought, well, social media, let's get going. Okay, we can <laughs> make some money off this. This is where TikTok started. I said it. TikTok started to become a thing like it was there but this really started to gain in popularity and people were I think just trying to make a quick buck and we see a lot of people who are going out of their way to okay if you're new here and you don't know me you're about to get to know me really well because this is kind of what I'm known for a side rant. Oh my gosh. These people coming on to social media. I'm just like complaining for just a minute. Just hang with me. It's going to be a good story. I promise. But like people coming on to social media, just trying to look mysterious. Like, uh, <laughs> and like, I don't, I can't, I can't with y'all. Like, it's just like all this like performative, let's call it that performative spirituality. And some of it's just funny, okay, and just irksome to me as a person. And um, others were downright dangerous. So this would be the type of thing where someone has a serious illness. And I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes here. I know some people have very strong beliefs around this. All of them respect. I'm just uh, putting this out there for everyone's consideration, my perspective. But um, some people would not go to the doctor because they think that this is going to save them. Or not paying attention to underlying medical issues and thinking they're going to go off and have a shamanic journey when they were not physically prepared or mentally or even spiritually prepared maybe to do that. You feel me? More of what I saw. And I want to be careful here. I don't want to call anybody out or drag anybody's name. That's not the intention here. But I remember when I first came on. I started with YouTube, okay, and I come onto YouTube, and I'm doing this, I kind of felt, it was a a natural flow, and I was excited, and a little nervous, like, I was nervous to be on camera, I was nervous of, like, trolls and things like that, but I got out there, and right away, hmm, you ready for this? I'm, I'm spilling it all today, okay, hang in there, get, get a snack, get a drink, uh, some tea or something, because here we go, (laughs) when I first got on YouTube, I immediately started getting bombarded with people saying, if you're not certified by this one person, then you're not worth anything. And I was like, okay, whatever, you know, like, like I do my own approach. This comes very naturally to me. I kind of just stepped right into it. I have been doing this for people prior to being on social media. And I would have like very strange things happening in readings and people breaking down in tears and finally having a release. So I knew what I was doing. I, I, that wasn't, that person wasn't the end all be all for this. As a matter of fact, they were, um, this is why I'm not dragging any names here, but just in my opinion, this person was pretty toxic and a bit of a zealot. Okay. And was doing more controlling than guiding. I felt like it was a little, um, phony a little bit, uh, but this is, this is the point I want to make with this discussion throughout this video. Here's another example of what I'm trying to get at here. So when I was getting all this pressure to be certified by someone, okay, cool. Um, I saw that this person was coming to my town uh, and I went ahead and went. And there was another summit I was going to go to anyway. This was kind of another event around that time. I was like, sure, it's all at the same place. Let's see what all the fuss is about, right? So I go in there and it was one of the most disturbing experiences I've ever had. Um, It was not enlightening. It was not, uh, it wasn't spiritual. It wasn't spiritual at all. It was celebrity worship. 
it was a room filled with zombies. And self-indulgent people. And narcissists. And codependents. All playing off of each other's energy. And I think one of the saddest, maybe even most draining things about being in that room was just watching a bunch of us trying to figure things out. And nobody had the answer. <laughs> Not even the person on the stage. So that didn't sit well with me. And I remember I would go to these things. Now, when I go, I'm very independent and I don't like waiting on other people <laughs> before I go off and do something. When I want to go, I want to go. And I don't want somebody coming in. I, I have a pattern with people coming in. If I say, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z, would you like to join me? Um, they end up inviting extra people. And usually it's people that I don't really care to spend time with because they're not very nice people. Uh, or they're going to you know, be in charge. They just take it over, right? And they make it theirs. So that's why I go off and I do things on my own. So wherever I go, I usually meet new friends. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with um, connecting with people and I'm never alone. Even though I go places alone, I'm never alone. It usually takes me about two minutes, three minutes, maybe. I think maybe my record's five minutes. Let's give it five minutes before someone's striking up a conversation and next thing you know, we've hung out for the evening, right? So that's usually usually how it goes for me. When I was at these events, I was by myself, isolated. Uh, it, w it was creepy. People would look at me with a little... I, I can't describe it, guys. It was just... It was weird. And it was uncomfortable. And at the same time, I didn't really want anybody sitting with me because... I don't know. It's just, again, a lot of this like kind of false worship. Now, what I didn't like about some of these speakers. So there was the one event where I was supposed to get certified, so to speak. Um, and it was not a good experience whatsoever. And then there was this other summit that was going on. The thing that I just thought was an absolute failure on their part was that, number one, they weren't really talking about anything that anybody could relate to. It was all just like concepts, like, like fun fantasy little concepts like in, well angel numbers is like a thing but like you know just kind of utilizing like here's here's this card and when this card comes out it means da 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 da, da. well not always sorry tarot readers but not always okay <laughs> the idea that's why I like oracle first of all I don't like I don't really get in tune with the like most traditional energy of tarot it's just never been a thing of mine um but sometimes Oracle decks, it depends on what it is. It can spark your intuition. It can help with the connection, right? But this was a kind of thing where there was no responsible talk. It wasn't like, hey, remember to still see a therapist. Hey, remember we all have bad days. There was none of that. This was all, I'm on a pedestal and I am perfect and I am the author here and I am this and I am that and you just sit here and listen to me because that's how I make my money. Again, there was no real talk. So this is what why I'm saying all this, okay? When it comes to using spirituality in a bad way, you are going to get off your soul's path. We don't really derail too much, usually from soul's, soul contracts, but what you've agreed to on your soul's contract. But you're going to have to do it over. You're going to have to do it over. And if, if your spiritual practice doesn't make you understanding, loving, it doesn't mean that you never get angry. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't ever set a boundary. It's not that. But if it doesn't bring you peace, if it doesn't um, open your heart to make you more compassionate, if it doesn't make you stronger, if it's got you constantly questioning everything, honey, that's the devil. That's not, that's not the light. That's not God. Now, having said that, how many of you have felt a terror in you? Life is changing. Finances are bad, maybe, or you just can't seem to find that, that love partner, or you really want to start a family, but your body's just not allowing you to do it. Or you know what? Maybe you just feel like life is just never getting better. Like life is a constant struggle and you're just always alone. You're never alone. 
I got you, babe. Okay, you're never alone. Whenever those kinds of emotions come up and then somebody just shows up and says, hey, I got the answer. Yeah, you're going to perk up and go tell me. And maybe even if you're skeptical, you still have curiosity, don't you? You still want to know <laughs> in case, just in case you're missing something, right? Like you, you want to you wanna get all the facts. This is what gets people down the road and being susceptible to dark energies. And dark energy works through people just like the light works through people. And unfortunately, the way this world is set up, you guys know I worked in publishing, okay? I, I It wasn't all bad, but it was um, interesting. Like I, I listen, hey, yo, side ran. Here comes was the second one. I've gone off on a lot of tangents. I do apologize. Um, but in, um, in that realm of publishing, I saw stuff getting published that for what? Why? Why? How? How? How'd that person get through? <laughs> What's going on here? Meanwhile, I would know of other authors or I saw other books. Like if you've ever gone to like the bargain bin and you find the most beautifully written book that has a great message, but it got tossed aside. Why? Well, we would often generically say the world just wasn't ready yet. And I agree. I agree. Because it's genuine. It gets tossed aside. If it's too real, if it's too, if it's getting too close to the, the heart of who we really are, it gets tossed aside. If you don't believe me, start paying attention. Start paying attention to what gets through to the mainstream and what doesn't. So the way we get conditioned to think is that we have to learn from people who have all of their stuff figured out. And they're the one that wrote the book on it. And they're the one that was chosen to come here and speak on this. I've been chosen to be a speaker. I've been a speaker many times. And I always show up making sure that I am not seen as anything but what I really am. So maybe I ramble. Maybe I lose my train of thought. <laughs> right? Maybe I'm off on another tangent. That's okay because that's who I am. I didn't come here saying I was perfect. So we get into a danger zone with that. When we have everyone saying, oh, here is the clear cut formula. We get trained to think like this. This is my point. We get trained to think that they have all the answers and that a formula is how you live your life because you do this plus this, you're gonna get an outcome. Boy, that's not how it goes. <laughs> you know this, you know this because you've seen things fall apart. You've seen things not work out. So how is it that we still keep getting convinced that they know better? Now, I'm not saying that these authors don't have, or these speakers that were at this event, didn't have something to contribute to the world. They did, but often it was their earliest works that were the purest. You see the manipulation of the marketing around the publishing process. And it started to lose its original message. And maybe even, I can't speak for these people, but I would just guess Maybe they lost a little bit of themselves in this process. As one might, if you're expected to go to every single city that this summit is traveling around and you have to give up the same speech every single time. I bet they get headaches. I bet they don't feel well sometimes. I bet sometimes they're feeling foggy. Maybe they're jet lagged or whatever. And so they got to stick to the script because they don't have energy for anything else. I have all the love and compassion for that. But with this one particular person that was supposed to certify me, even though I was already doing it, um, <laughs> doing my angel work, um, there was an appalling amount of disempowerment in the people in the audience, an alarming amount of, um, I'm not going to lie to you, sociopaths. Again, if you don't know me, I absolutely refuse to use the term antisocial personality disorder. That ticks me off because it makes makes it sound like it's something less than what it is. Okay. But I saw some pretty evil people in this room. Uh, a lot of, like I said, disempowered people who also didn't really care to help themselves. So a lot of victim signaling, 
a lot of, like I said, self-indulgence. Uh, this is the one I've told this story before in another video, but a woman stood up and she's bursting into tears and she's saying to the person on the stage, cause they were asking for people to tell their story and she stands up and she talks about how she's lost her husband and how awful, and you know, we're all really feeling for her. And the person on the stage who's running this, this talk, who was the speaker there, the author there asked, you know, when did this happen? We're thinking it happened yesterday. It happened a week ago, you know, something. And she said it happened 20 over 20 years ago. There is no expiration date on grief. However, there is an expiration date on using someone's death to manipulate others. I said what I said. There is something else about getting up in front of a crowd of people and making this seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was a drain. And again, every situation is different. So like if somebody's just not ready, they're just not in a space to heal. That's one thing. This was not, and I could be wrong, but this was not the impression I was getting from this woman. I, I think... <laughs> Go watch an episode of And Just Like That. Um, the character of Carrie, most of you probably know by now if you're going to watch it, but she's a widow and she uses her widow status to manipulate people around her to get what she wants. That's kind of what this woman that was standing at this event, it was giving a little bit of that feeling. Like she just wanted a captive audience. And I've said to people before, you have these people who don't want to have conversation. They want that captive audience. And she was just being a drain after a while. Like she just wouldn't, it wasn't like somebody standing up. Yes, this has happened. Yes, I'm still processing and then getting whatever she came there to get. She wouldn't stop talking. She went on and on. Then uh, when she was about to be asked to sit down or when we thought she was done, uh, she said, bawling, um, do you have a message from my bird? I lost my bird. I don't remember at the time, like how, how long ago, like you see what I'm saying? Like her bird, like she just wanted to keep going. There's a difference between someone who's never been heard in their life. Shout out to the, the middle children out there. Um, you know what I'm talking about or who always get overlooked or always thinks that, you know, you've got it all together and then it just starts to come out. That's one thing. All love to you, baby. You go ahead and you say everything you got to say. It is an entirely different thing when you potentially have a covert narcissist who's going to stand up and just victim signal constantly uh, to get people's attention and to keep people's attention. Okay. Now the person who I was saying was supposedly going to certify all of us and I got so much to say about that too. There was nothing to certify. It was like, follow the formula. You get a piece of paper at the end. That's... Uh, all right. Well, I, I didn't make the rules. Whatever. <laughs> I guess we'll just go with it. But that's the kind of neediness and even I would say greediness that was in that room. And I remember I was sitting there and there was this lovely woman. I forget where she was from. Uh, she wasn't from Germany. I don't think Switzerland. I don't know. She was she had flown there for this. OK, she came from a whole other country. And not even just Canada, okay? Like, she, she, she took the long flight, okay? But she's there, and she was sitting next to me, and we both were just kind of like, I think both weirded out. And at some point, we just made eye contact with one another. And she said, are you getting a weird feeling from this? I said, yes. Yeah, she goes, yeah, I, I'm just going to kind of, she's like, I flew all this way. I'm just going to kind of go with it. But I don't want to be here. Why am I telling you all this? Because this is a prime example of people doing spiritual sidestepping or being a spiritual narcissist, right? Or us as a society putting people on a pedestal. There's nobody out there who's got the right, like what? Like nobody's going to give us the, the, the magic. I don't want to, <laughs> actually I started that phrase and neither one of those words is very nice to say here, but nobody has the magic solution, let's say, um, to carry us through. We are on a path to figure things out for ourselves. Now, I have not been that popular. Um, I mean, I've done okay, but not, not for 10 years worth of being out here. I've taken a lot of hits for being out here <laughs> talking about this. Um, people getting very upset that I, I think the twin flame concept is absolutely one of these manipulation tactics. Now, not everybody agrees with me and that's okay. Like you do you, I will do me. But I guarantee you, if you come and you ask about your twin flame, I will love you and, and respect you. 
but I'm still going to be very honest with you. Like if, if I tune in and maybe you've got some kind of weird soul dynamic with somebody, I'll give you that, but I'm not going to use the term twin flame. I did early on in my career to make other people comfortable, but that, no, I, I can't participate in that. But this stuff needs to be said because people are using spirituality in the wrong way. We're going to talk about how it has become trendy as well. So we talked about spiritual narcissism and people kind of using this to get attention or people using this to get fame and they think they're going to get fame and fortune. That was where all the tarot readers started coming on in 2015. Everyone's trying to make uh, a quick buck on social media and some of them have been wildly successful and there's one person I'm thinking of in in particular <clears throat> who is a tarot reader just shot ahead in popularity this person is very good at reading tarot but I don't take this person to be a very empathetic person. And that's what's so scary. If you take a mental approach to these divination practices, it's just that. It, it's a mental intellectual approach. And yes, you can be good at it on paper. But when someone is in a bad space where they're just seeking any kind of answer and you've got that person being the one to present it and that's the person that everyone's gravitating towards, it's disturbing. It's scary. That because it to me it says that's where society is. Now, I spoke in another video. I started talking about tattoos. <laughs> Don't come for me. Some of my most favoriteest people out in this world, they they have tattoos. Why am I going after tattoos? I'm not actually going after the tattoo itself, uh, tattooing itself. I'm going after certain symbols that people put on their bodies. And I previously was giving an example about how I came across somebody who had Metatron's cube tattooed on them. And I was like, oh, so cool. Hey, look at that. And I'm like, what does that mean to you? And this per person <laughs> was, <laughs> was so arrogant and so pompous. And I immediately had the ick. Well, I shouldn't have asked. Uh, when's that narcissist alarm going to go off? I think it was broken that day. I shouldn't have spoken to this person because they went, well, it's really sacred. It's Metatron's cube. Yeah, I know. I said that to you. <laughs> what does it mean to you? And, and how did you come about that? I love people's stories, right? I really do. But this person didn't really have a story, except they were talking about how they had done... Uh, most of you might know this. I don't want to say too much here, but they had done, sure, let's talk about it. They had done, what is it, DMT or something like that. Uh, and they had they had like a trip basically and was saying, yeah, and I saw this and then I found out it was Medchan's kid. And then, 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 and the funny thing is, is have you ever done or come across somebody like that? Imagine what an angel medium who works with these archangels all the time. You could think that's crazy if you want. Anybody can work with them. But I do it on a consistent basis. And I'm very serious about that. And I'm very ethical about that. I'm always checking myself, making sure I'm doing ethical things with that. And I can tune in. And I tuned in. Hey, Metatron, <laughs> what's going on here? This is a lost little boy. He's been hurt. Give him some, some grace. And so I allowed this person to stand there and educate me on Metatron's cube. But see, there's my ego. I'm like, bro, I don't know about this. I know about it. You're just a kid. I got to work on that. Or, or, or not. Maybe I'll just let it go. <laughs> We don't have to work on everything, I don't think. This was annoying, okay? I can't be fake. This was annoying. But I, I, you know, I understand from the standpoint this is a hurt person who's trying to find some thing to hang on to. And so I was like, yeah, this is so cool, you know, just kind of went with it. And I said, well, you know, this is what I do. If ever you want to tune in with Archangel Metatron and work with him, I'd be happy to help you with that. And he goes, I already have a connection with him. And no, he didn't. And again, this is where that egotistical hubris comes in and it can be very, very dangerous when you're working with divination type things or if you are tuning into energies. If you don't know the difference, if you don't know what you're really tuning into, and I've made this mistake plenty of times, okay? We, we all do it. Again, if there's a practitioner out there who tells you, I've been doing this for so many years and 
I can't make a <sighs> liar. Okay, <laughs> liar. Don't don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. We all can end up tuning into the wrong thing from time to time. Okay, like we we recognize it, we get back out of it, but there's always something's always trying it. You know what I mean? Anyway, so this person, you know, I saw was misusing what this symbolism was. Now, is it going to harm him? Only if he keeps trying to tune in when he's not really tuning in to Archangel Michael because he's leaving himself open to the potential of something else coming in and manipulating him. Okay, so there's that. Also, maybe don't get things tattooed on you unless you actually know what you're carrying around on your body. And that was why I actually started the whole tattoo <laughs> conversation. When it's on you, I want, okay, let, this gets a little complicated. So it automatically being on you doesn't necessarily have to mean something. But if you look at it and you are activated in some way every time you look at it, then it's powerful. You feel me? So if you put 444, I've seen people put 777, 1111 here across their throat. So presumably every time they look at themselves, although it's going to be backwards, right? Anyway, um, a reminder, you know, there's some activation there. But that approach... That's not angelic. That's not what you're doing is you have, okay, so let's say I have 777 tattooed across my throat here. Comment down below if you're like listening to this. You're like, Michelle, I'll say, listen, I got this right. <laughs> Sorry, I love you. I do. I love you. And I hope you can understand what I'm trying to get across here. But if you look at that and you're like, yes, I am so powerful. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm there to like remind myself that I'm so prosperous and da -da 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 -da. Um, that energy. So, God, do I have, do I have visuals? I got I just go and use my hand. So like let's say here's third dimensional ego consciousness. Here we are in density consciousness with our physical bodies. Yes. Seeing that 777 tattooed on you and you're like, "Yes, I'm elevated." So you're coming just a little bit uh, up from that. You're getting tuned into your prosperity, you know, the goodness of life or whatever. Um you're coming into a little bit of fourth dimensional energy. But that is not the same thing as looking at that and going I'm remembering the sacredness. This is a reminder to me to take a moment to collect myself, to align myself, and to connect in. If you have that kind of response when you see it, now it's effective. Cool. And just because you take 444 and you put it on your body permanently, it does not mean that like, I don't know. It's like you got an angel's signature on your arm. It doesn't exactly work like that. Okay. It doesn't work like that. It's how, what it does to you when you see it. That's why some people, I think like I've met some very beautiful people who have the worst things. I'm talking bad. Okay. Like dark stuff tattooed on them. But when they look at it, they just feel a little rebellious and like, you know, I scare people away, <laughs> scaring all the Karens away with my tattoos. You know, um, it's a defense mechanism to them. It doesn't bring any harm. But here, here comes the second point. When you put artwork on your body, that's something other people are taking in. I know this is a weird discussion, but we got to talk about this. OK, and if you're like, well, what does this have to do with spiritual psychosis? This is all a part of it. Or spiritual sidestepping, uh, spiritual bypassing, however we want to call it, magical thinking. This is all the little nitty gritty pieces of it that you may not have thought about previously. Okay? You with me? I know. This is forever long, but thank you for being here with me. We want to keep that in mind with anything that you have on. Now, if you want to harm people, and there are people out there who have darkness working through them, well... There's that. I mean, they, they're doing what they're doing. But if you're not intending that and you have that on your body, I mean, okay. Now, some people get especially angelic numbers painted, painted. Where did I get that from? Uh, <laughs> it's getting late. Um, when they have that tattooed on them, they may be like, well, that could be someone's sign and symbol every time they look at me. Love the sentiment. Okay, we love that. It was very kind of you, very sweet. 
Okay. And if I see that on you, I'm not going to take that as a sign from angels, nor should you. If you just see it tattooed on somebody that was meaningful to them, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is your sign. What are we talking about, Michelle? Hang with me. Okay. <laughs> about to go down this road. That does not mean that it's a sign from angels. That means that person wanted to maybe bring some light to someone's life. So take it for what it is. Okay. It could also mean that that person is an egomaniac and wants everyone to remember them like because they have, do you know what I mean? Like they're like, I got 777 on me. Someone's going to feel super lucky because they saw that on me and I was their symbol. Blah. So I know it's probably going to spark a bit of conversation if people see this uh, and are tattooed with those things. And I understand. And if you do have that kind of tattoo on you, can you share your story if you don't mind? Um, I, I would be curious. But just from a spiritual standpoint, that's not how angel numbers work necessarily. Again, it can be powerful if it has uh, it does something positive for you. Then awesome. That's probably why most people do it. But like I'm just saying, I just wanted to clear that up. Uh, Angel numbers, you see angel numbers in a way or in a space that is highly unlikely. Like you were not looking in that direction and you suddenly felt this thing to like turn and it's there. That would be an angelic message. The angel signs and angelic messaging, you know, mediums, I guess, uh, that's getting so muddled now. Because it has become mainstream. So again, I, I think I was saying at the top of this video, at the top of this talk, that you know, this when I saw it becoming mainstream, I was kind of excited about that. I'm like, oh, finally, I'm not always just going to be seen as the woo woo idiot. So disrespectful, but or the crazy person or whatever, like people are going to finally start understanding this. And then I saw people just, again, trying to make a quick buck off of it, um, manipulating people, taking advantage of vulnerable people, um, using this as an excuse for everything. I have to stay in this horrible relationship. He's my twin flame. What else can I say about that? I mean, no, <laughs> it's a no. So we want to be careful. We want to be careful. And I'm especially concerned about some of the younger people out there, you know, let's say who are 20 years younger than me. Um, so that would be Gen Z. Uh, I'm a little concerned about Gen Z. Now, this is um, getting a little bit of a high off of um, the concepts, but not exactly engaging in them. Now, I'm not trying to make this a generational thing. It's not necessarily that, but I just, I only put it out there because they're the ones that are, um, you know, making the most social media content really so we can see what their perspective is. And overall, I think people are missing the point. There are people my age who are missing the point. You can't take a spiritual practice and use it as your point of power, uh, as a way of getting back at people, or you can protect yourself. You can certainly do that. But this is not meant to be a game. It's not meant to be like, okay, I feel powerless. So now if I do this practice, I will be powerful. I can only speak for myself, but the work that I do, I've always seen it as getting you into at least a peaceful enough place where you get a little bit of immediate relief so that you feel at peace enough to start healing, so that you feel at peace enough to start getting some clarity, so that you can start uh, handling your situation, feeling loved enough so that you know you deserve to get further help. And as I've said previously, you know, and I've said this in many other videos, when people come to me for a reading, they're in a safe space. So people cry a lot. <laughs> they cry a lot. And to me, I think that's good. I think that's good. And of course, I always, if anybody ever gets a service with me, I always keep checking with you. Do we need to stop talking about this? How are you doing? You know, do you have support around you? I make sure that you're cared for in that way. But please don't use this as your parlor trick. Um, one of the 
I, I shouldn't even go down this road. Yes, I should. Uh, when I there have been some clients that have come in, and they just want to know is my court case going to be settled? Uh, that's very three D. It's not bad to ask that, but it's it gets bad when you can't hear anything else. Okay, you just want a yes or no. It's going to work out. You just want to be told everything's going to be great, or you're fearful and you want to know what's going to go wrong so that you can't that, go to a tarot reader for that. That's not angelic stuff. I mean, I, I do that stuff, but I try to get people in like a better emotional place when they leave the reading. But sometimes they're so stuck in their ego that they are not receptive to that. I've literally had, um, well, this person was very narcissistic, roll their eyes at me. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know all that little spiritual nonsense, whatever. Yeah, I've heard it before. That's not what I'm asking you. Is he going to come back to me or not? And I said, no. And they were like, ah, why? Uh, because you act like this. Let me be the mirror. It's part of my path. I have no problem doing it. Those kinds of people coming in, especially trying to use angelic energy to do that. The angels aren't going to play your games. Okay. They're just not going to do that. They're going to tell you if you're going to come and say, okay, I'm open and receptive to what the angels want to tell me. You're going to get the lessons. And people hate this. They hate this so much because they're like, I didn't come here for homework. I came here for answers. Understandable. Human to human, absolutely understandable. But the quick and easy answer might make you feel better in the moment. But it is not going to help you in the long run. This is why, I, gosh, I can't tell you how many people come to me. And they're like, yeah, I got this tarot reading. Not down on tarot readers. There's some really beautiful people out there who are reading tarot. So I'm not talking about you. But not everybody is great, right? So people come to me and going, yeah, so, you know, I have been spinning my wheels on this thing and this person told me this and this person told me that, but I don't, I don't see any progress. I don't, I don't see myself elevating at all. What am I missing? And the answer usually is you're missing the actual spiritual practice. You're, you're, you're missing the actual work of the soul's contract because you were staying on the surface. And you were satisfied with the answer, the the simplistic answer that you got. You didn't go any deeper. And so now this energy is still running as an undertow for you, okay? Sweeping you along in your life. And you're going to have moments where you feel out of control. You're going to have moments where you feel like, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. And how disheartening is that? And are you really enjoying your life at that point? You see what I'm saying? Like that's what angelic energy, in my opinion, does. It helps you see the beauty of things. It helps lift you up. Now, the other kind of, if we want to talk about like I, psychosis, I mean, sure, there are examples of that for sure. Um, but I think these other examples I'm giving, these in my practice and in my experience, these are a little more common. If you're a practitioner, I'd love, let's start this. Anybody else want to give their, do a video. If you have a channel, give a video on your perspective of this and what you've observed with your clients and, and people in your life. Uh, but the other thing that is pretty prominent would be <laughs> the spiritual narcissist, that spiritual ego. Uh, I, I always say, if someone has to tell you how spiritual they are, or how wise they are, or how advanced they are, they're nothing of the sort. Wisdom is silent. Wisdom is peaceful. Wisdom is understanding. Wisdom is loving. Wisdom is confident. It doesn't have to prove itself to know that it exists. It's there. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to do anything, okay? So when people are really get, first of all, I've had this happen where the people have come for a reading and they're frustrated. They're very frustrated. And they're like, I've done all the courses. I'm already very advanced in this area and this area. As soon as you start giving me credentials, first of all, I've already tuned into your energy field because you gave me permission to do that. I'm already, I already am getting a read on you. <laughs> I'm getting a read on you and I'm getting messages in from the angelic realm about what you need to know. So when someone's coming in and saying, don't tell me anything about that, I've already done that. That's impossible because if you've done it, you would have been coming with a very different, being in a different space. Does that make sense? So people wanting 
to get to the finish line. And they're not real interested in the true process. They're not really interested in connection to the angelic realm for the growth of it, um, for improving their energy field, for contributing a better energy out into the universe, into the collective. They're not interested in that. They're just interested in their own wins, in their own qualifications and and all of this. There was a time where I had to take a break from live reading sessions because I had one person after another coming in and yes, being disrespectful and treating me like their punching bag. They were frustrated at life and they thought this is where I can say it to Michelle as if like I've done something to them, right? <laughs> like it, it was I don't know that I was just getting that impression that is kind of the mindset I was in like, whoa, why did you bring this here? Like, I understand if you're trying to heal and you break open into tears, that's a release. But you just bringing your frustrations in. Oh, that's that's something else. But let me explain to you how these frustrations looked. And this is how another way is another way that we sort of short circuit when it comes to spiritual practice. See, there's so many different examples of this. But here's yet another. That person who thinks that they have done all the spiritual work that they need to do and they're mad because they didn't get results. And they can't even see that the fact that they were doing this just for the results is the most egotistical thing that you could possibly do. Very egotistical. But they won't hear of it. I've already put in all this work. I already know all that. Just tell me this. As a matter of fact, if any of you get a live reading with me from here on out, if you start talking over me and saying, just tell me, we're hanging up. I will not read for you. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I've put up with a few of them. The last one was the last one. When I got off of that live reading, oh, I had to take a deep breath. I had to go like just decompress a little bit, get up and walk around. I was like, that was too much. That was just too much. So these are ways that, you know, the, the spiritual idea and the spiritual practices end up being highly mishandled and misused. And when we're talking about, you know, people with mental illness, this is giving them validation for their viewpoints. It's giving them validation for um, not getting help. I mean, someone comes up and says that they're from another planet. Listen, like I said, I am not out here trying to, uh, listen, aliens, they're here. I'm sure they, they must be. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This cannot be the height of intelligence. I believe in aliens because I must. Okay, please tell me there's, <laughs> there's something else out there. Okay, but I'm not trying to badmouth no aliens because if they come in, I don't want them to come up and be like, yo, we saw your videos. We need to talk to you. Okay. I, I don't need no trouble. Okay. But some people, <laughs> some people who are actually having maybe some psychosis or whatever that is, and they've got someone going, oh, yes, you are an incarnated, I don't know, snow pea. <laughs> You are an incarnated snow pea from the planet snow pea. And da 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 da. Listen, I'm not sitting here trying to be an expert on all of the planets and the different realms and the dimensions. It makes me laugh when people try to be experts on that. When you fell into this human body, Hanny, okay, you forgot. Don't don't play no games with me. Okay, like you forgot just like how I forgot. We all forgot. Okay, so you're sitting there acting like me, you're still like in tune. With your home planet, do tell. Do tell. I mean, maybe you are just better than me. I don't know. But I forgot. So maybe I just shouldn't assume that everybody <laughs> did. Let's get back on track. Um, we want to just be careful that we are not encouraging people's delusions. Uh, another way that people's delusions get supported through spirituality and uh, these sort of con artist readers is let's say somebody has a huge ego and they come in and they're like, I'm the best at everything. I've had these clients, you guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, they come in and they're like, I'm the best at everything and I'm going to be so famous. And that, um, enabling reader goes, Oh yes, I see that you're going to be super famous. And they're like, I knew it. I'm so glad I came here. Best money I ever spent. And then they walk away and they don't 
do anything real with their lives. Now, what does real mean? Real means connection. Real means it's bettering humanity. Real means you have had loving connections along the way. Because that's a good energy to put out into the universe, into the collective. It can change things. But... If everything is self-serving, if everything is about how successful you can be, if everything is about power, right? And this is what a lot of people do. They're like, I just want to be famous so I have power over people. <sighs> You're playing for the darkness. Now, if you were just being a good person and your fame came, okay, whatever. But you can tell the difference. You can tell when someone's a good person and when someone's not. So no, we can't be using spirituality and spiritual practice to hide from our lessons, to hide from our lives, to see it as a way, a checklist to keep score, uh, what makes us a better human than another person. It's meant to do the exact opposite. It's meant to help you heal. It's meant to help you open up and, you know, realize, oh my gosh, I haven't been living the way I want to live. I haven't been thriving. And more than anything, it's to help you connect to divine love. Because once you connect into that, you have that tiny little granule of remembering from a time and space outside of this density consciousness. That'll help you get through. That'll help you be brave to make that phone call and ask for an appointment with your doctor to go finally get that thing checked out. All right? <laughs> like that that big mole that's now like growing on your back and you're like, oh my gosh, I was so scared to go to the doctor. Well, <laughs> you can get a little comfort to go and get that help or to go and pick up that phone, you know, have the bravery to pick up the phone and ask for a therapy appointment to look at some of these things. There are some people out there who are like, no, they would be like the strict, really super, super, super new age people um, who would protest that and say, no, you're just trying to get us to do mainstream thinking. If you're vibrating just outside of your body and you're not integrated into this body, then you're not doing what you came here to do. And I should mention in here, there is a very big difference between spiritualism and spirituality. Spiritualism would be the occult practices. It's um, the fascination of energy manipulation. Again, I'm not saying that everybody who does that is unethical. That's the tricky part. Sometimes good people practice that, but they, you know, it's uh, probably a balancing act for them to go through that. Spirituality is, uh, you know, the heightened practice of alignment. And um, to me, that's where the angelic work resides. It's not in like some of the darker energies. It's it's wanting to better yourself. It's wanting and being good with guidance. So if you go and get an angelic reading, you're going to get, okay, here's how, here are some things to consider to break open, to free yourself so that you can feel lighter, so that you can start imagining your life going in this direction, which is more appropriate for your soul's contract. Maybe as opposed to another type of, um, practice where it's like, no, you're meant to go work at this office with these people in these clothes. You see what I'm getting at here. Um, but more to me, spiritualism is manipulation. It's a manipulation of energy. More often that because we're humans with ego in an ego consciousness, we don't always do that with the highest good of everyone on our minds. So this is a big discussion. Uh, this has been a very long discussion. <laughs> we will leave it there. I am sending you all so much love and take care.